somebody sent me an email. So this person says, hello, Tech G, how are you? I've used your videos on 220-1002 as a training aid for the 220-1002 exam or the software exam. He says, I've studied the book I have on A plus four times and watched many videos, including your series. I failed the test twice now, and he's unsure if he wants to take the test a third time. He says, I'm looking to see if you would have any advice or suggestion on how to pass this test. I received a 641 the first time and the 677 the second time. I'm not sure what to do besides what CompTIA tells me I need to work on. I followed their suggestions based on first time I failed and they gave me the same suggestions the second time. Do you know if the four performance questions holds more marks overall towards the illustrious 700 score? Could you do a video on the four performance questions if possible? Any help would be greatly appreciated. All right, so let's let's talk about this real quick y'all so we got somebody out here that has uh failed the software exam two times and this person wants to take it is contemplating on they, they should take the test a third time and it's a heavy contemplation because you got to remember these tests cost two hundred dollars matter of fact let's look it up right now how much do these tests cost? I totally forgot. So let's go to my website, Technology G. Look it up. How much these tests cost, y'all? So this is the latest price, $222 per exam. That's if you get a discount through me. If you pay full price, it's going to hit you for $239, uh, unless you can get your boss or somebody to pay for it or whatever. So he done failed it twice. He done spent $444, and he contemplating on spending another $222, right, on this exam. Here's my thing, right? All so he's watching videos and he's studying he's failed twice all right so he wants to know something about these performance-based questions so here's the thing i don't work for comp to you i don't know what kind of questions they're going to ask i mean i got an idea but i don't know exactly what they're going to ask because how it works is when you guys go take these exams you're going to have what are called pbqs performance-based questions these are like quote unquote your hands on where they'll ask you a question how do you uh display the uh tcp ip configurations of this computer basically you would just hit windows r type cmd it'll pull up the cli then in cli you'll type ip config forward slash all and it'll display all this tcp ip connection information right you would have to actually do that on the test right now with the pbqs you might get i don't know you might get about four or five of those questions because remember you gotta you're gonna get a grand total of no more than 90 questions you're gonna have 90 minutes to answer go through the entire exam so you're looking at about a minute per question but the pbqs the performance-based questions out of all those 90 questions if you get 90, because sometimes you might get 88, you might get 89, you're not going to get no more than 90. But out of the PBQs, you might only have about four or five questions. And what I normally do when I take the test or when I did take the test, I would go through and answer all the multiple choice questions or just all the questions in general as fast as I could. And then I would save my PBQs for the end because I know they're going to take a little bit more time where I'm going to have to read the instructions and then go in there and do what they want me to do and, and blah, 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 blah. Right. So I don't know exactly what PBQs they're going to give you because I don't work for CompTIA and CompTIA doesn't release that information for obvious reasons. But this is why I encourage you guys to invest in these, these virtual labs. So let's go back to these labs again. So you go to the Tech G site, Tech G over here. I'll be, I'll be over here selling virtual labs. And these virtual labs come straight from CompTIA. Right? This isn't stuff that I just put together. This is straight from the source, the people who make the exam that you want to take. CompTIA got these labs out here for the uh, hardware and software exam, and they walk you through all kinds of stuff, man. Just how to install some RAM, how to do some uh, user management consoles, how to do some installs, some Linux stuff, some remote technologies, and you know, just all kinds of stuff, man. How to do Bash scripts, PowerShell scripts, all kind of wonderful stuff is what they do up in here. When you're out they're studying ladies and gentlemen it's one thing if you got like a, a decent memory you could just go through and look at some slideshows i personally don't think that's going to be the case for most people i think most of y'all are going to need additional study aids to help you you're going to need notes and you're going to need some labs in your life hence the reason why i put i'm putting together these little self-study programs because this information in here it's a lot of information to go through for the comp to a plus the hardware test in my opinion is easier because you know you're just you're talking about physical devices but this software thing to me, I think it's a little bit more complicated because now you got to memorize exactly what the heck is going on up in here. So we got to some of these questions on this quiz I was giving you about the commands or whatever, like CD or something like that. Well, unless you're really good at putting flashcards together and memorizing these things, 
you know, the only way that I believe that you could truly memorize, understand which of these commands is asking you to do what, you, what, what, is, what the question is asking you to do, is you got to go out there and start labbing, getting your lab on, actually getting your hands involved and start click clacking away on the computer and moving up and down through these directories, typing up these commands like IP config and ping. I mean, basically, you just got to get out there and get your lab on. So my man's here. He says he failed it twice. He's contemplating on taking it three times. I don't know exactly what type of studying he's been doing, whether he's just sitting there just reading the book. Because if you go out there and buy these books, you got to understand these books are oftentimes like five, six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred pages long. Very little pictures, very dry reading. And normally when I when I attempted to read them in the past, they would put me to sleep with on the first two paragraphs. Right. That Like that's just how dry and boring a lot of this stuff can be. Hence the reason why a lot of people choose to watch videos for, you know, because I guess the videos make it a little more entertaining or whatever the case may be. But with that being said, when it comes to the studying aspect, how I study and how I tell people to study, I'm a huge fan of breaking out the pen and paper and writing notes. Like I'll go get me a little composite notebook or one of them little, what do you call them? Notebooks with the, I just had to buy my son some of these. Anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about, them little notebooks and I'll write notes and I'll go through and I'll start highlighting stuff, highlighting what I think is important. And then before, when I go to the next lesson, I'll go through, you know, listen to whatever I got to listen to, write down whatever. I got to write down, make my highlights before I start the third lesson or the next lesson. I go back and reread the highlights from the previous lesson before I start the next lesson. That's how I read books. Like I'm a slow reader. I'm slow at reading, not in terms of comprehension, but slow in terms of it takes me forever to read a book because I always, before I go to chapter two, I reread the highlights from chapter one before I go to chapter two. So let's just say a book has 10 chapters. In theory, I, I would have read that book at least 10 times. So I'm a slow reader in that aspect, but that is exactly how I study when it comes to certification exams. I write a gang of notes because it's my firm belief I'm at least recording this information into my brain at least one time by me actually writing the stuff down and doing my highlights and going through and reading my highlights. And after I do all my highlights, I also like to break out my flashcards. I'm a huge fan of flashcards. When I was going to take these exams back in the day, I would go up to the testing center with my flashcards. And as I'm sitting in the lobby, running through my flashcards, trying to make sure I get, I'm getting all this information in my my brain about what commands I need to know. What are all the um, 802.11 wireless specifications out there? You know, whatever the heck it is, I put on these flashcards. And before I got to that point, I would go out there and I would try to get access to equipment, you know, some old computer lying around and try to run through and uh, learn the commands. Some of y'all that might not be feasible because you feasible, you might not have a, a computer lying around, but that's where these virtual labs come into play. This is why I think y'all have an advantage over people like me who started learning tech 20 years ago. I, I didn't have a virtual lab to go to. And I had to go find a physical computer and figure out how to, you know, do what I had to do on that computer. You guys got virtual labs where you don't have to install anything. You just log in, hit the start button. It spins up a virtual computer. You can get busy doing all kinds of stuff, right? So you got to get your lab on is what I'm trying to say. You got to get those flashcards together. You got to break out those notebooks and write notes down. You can't just sit here and just watch the videos and think that's all you got to do. Very few people can do that, right? Unless you got like a photographic memory or or whatever the case may be, but you need to break out the notebooks. And I'm not saying that this guy wasn't doing that, but I'm just saying this in general. You need to break out the notebook, take notes, get the flashcards cracking, get you some virtual labs in your life, dedicate about 30 minutes to an hour a day just studying this stuff. And this is another thing, right? For you guys out there who plan on taking these exams. If you really want to force yourself to study and prepare for these exams, go buy your voucher and schedule your exam first. So if you're like, hey tech, I want to go get my Network Plus certification. First thing you should do is go to technologyg.com and get your discounted Network Plus certification. But go buy your voucher and schedule your exam. So what's today's date? Today is what? Today is August 21st. Let's just say you want to take the test September 21st. So 30 days, whatever, 30 days from now. Get your voucher, schedule your exam for September 21st. So that way you give yourself a hard deadline because you've already paid for this test. And if you don't show up to take the test, you lose your money. Or if you do show up to take the test and you don't pass the test, you lose your money. So that way you can force yourself to get into this mentality of studying and allocate at least 30 minutes to an hour a day studying, man. Studying being writing, watching the lessons, reading the books, writing your notes, getting your flashcard game together and going through those virtual labs. If you got access to virtual labs or if you got access to physical equipment. You do those every day or five days, six days a week, 
30 minutes to an hour a day. I don't see how you could fail this test unless you're just sitting around here just thinking you're just going to read through the book and not have to take any notes. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. Take a bunch of practice exams, too. I forgot all about that. That's, you know, Tech G. We got all that crap covered as soon as I revamped the entire system on my self-study thing. But you're going to have to go out there and do a bunch of quizzes and take a bunch of practice exams as well so that you can actually see if you're retaining this information, not just for memorization purposes, but for the purpose of do you actually understand what the heck is going on? Because there's one thing to go out there and try to memorize a bunch of information to pass a test. But it's another thing, if you're actually trying to learn the information for comprehension purposes, to me, I believe that makes it easier to memorize stuff for a test. So for example, if I'm studying for my A plus hardware and I'm learning about VLANs and switches, if I'm actually learning this stuff because I'm really trying to understand what this thing is and how it works and I'm out here labbing and doing everything I got to do, when it's time for me to go take a test. Now I got my flashcards out. I got my little notes out. I'm trying to prepare my mind just to memorize information really quick to pass an exam. I think that goes a whole lot easier, that method, because I've already trained myself to learn and comprehend the information. Because there's a lot of people who get all this information, the slideshows, the notes, and they'll just try to memorize all this information just to pass a test. But they never, tr I firmly believe they never truly go about the process of trying to comprehend this stuff first, if that makes any sense. And this is something that I see with young people, because listen, I got a son that's in high school. He's in 11th grade right now. And we had these conversations before when he was in ninth and 10th grade, it clicked on me that, wow, these kids, and this happens with adults as well, but these kids are being trained to memorize stuff as opposed to learning stuff. So I'll give you an example. So these kids, at least down here, the teachers, they'll give like these kids a packet. And let's just say the packet says, uh, who's your IT teacher? And let's just say there's, I'm the IT teacher, right? They were like, oh, his name is Tech G. And Tech G used to be in the army for 13 years. And now he makes a bunch of YouTube videos teaching IT, right? Let's just say that information is written in the packet verbatim. The kids, they'll take that packet. They'll go home and study that. His name is Tech G. He was in the army for 13 years. Now he makes YouTube videos teaching IT. They expect to see questions on the test that ask them, hey, what is this guy's name? Oh, his name is Tech G. What did he do for 13 years of his life? Oh, he was in the United States Army. What does he currently do right now? Oh, he makes videos on YouTube. They expect to see that. If you throw a question in there saying something like, what did Tech G do for 13 years in the military? They're going to be like, oh my goodness, I don't know. Even though you know they could watch my videos and they, they would discover, hey, I worked in IT. I jumped out of airplanes and deployed twice. I used to work for the NSA. I did all kind of goofy stuff, right? But if that information isn't written on the doggone slideshow, they're not going to get it. They're being trained to memorize bullet points on slideshows as opposed to trying to learn the information, like the, the stuff that's not written on the doggone slideshow. And I'm saying that because I see this happening with kids. And so it's just a logical conclusion for me to make that this is probably happening with adults as well who try to study these certifications. So I got my wonderful slideshows that I put up on the YouTube. Y'all can go sign up for a Tech G membership. I got the greatest slideshows in the world. It's just literally just a white screen with words written on it in my logo, right? I think a lot of people are trying to memorize my slideshows and not really trying to comprehend what the heck it is we're talking about. Like they might see the word VLAN. Oh, that stands for virtual local area network. And they can memorize that if I ask them, hey, what is VLAN? Oh, that's a virtual local area network. But then if I ask them to explain, well, what is a VLAN? What does it do? They'll be like, uh, uh, like, no, uh, uh, is not the answer. What it does, it basically logically divides a switch into separate networks. They wouldn't be able to answer that because I might not have written that actually on the slideshow. I hope that's making sense. And look, like I say, your man's here. He, he says he failed the test twice, 220 something dollars a pop. So he don't spent like $400 so far on this test. And he's contemplating on taking it again. Here's my thing. If you really want to be in IT, and this is specifically to this dude that sent this to me. If you really want to be in IT and get these IT big bucks and go out there and be living a, living a lap of luxury, making six figures. But if you really want to do these things, then yeah, you're going to have to come up with that money and go take this test. Right. But I think you may need to adjust how you study. Like I say, I don't know you. And I don't know what your study habits are, but understand I've been teaching IT entry-level IT in some capacity since 2011. I taught it in the military for four and a half years. I started the Tech G channel two and a half years ago. So you add all that time up, we're, we're, hit, we're, we're hitting like seven years of me doing this in some capacity. Out of those seven years, I done trained and taught hundreds of people, 
have helped hundreds, if not maybe thousands, get certified. I think I'm a pretty good judge at this point as to how people learn and study. And what I think is happening is I think you might need to adjust how you're studying. And like I said, this this dedicated this direct to this dude that sent me this email today. Obviously, I'm not there at your house with you. And I'm not about to be, so that's not going to happen. I think you need to go get your little composite notebook, get you some pens, get you some highlighters, and take it back to the old days before everybody got addicted to phones. Everybody got addicted to computers. How we used to do back in the 80s when I was in, in elementary school, in the 90s when I was in junior high going into high school. You need to go old school style and start writing this stuff out, highlighting stuff, breaking out the flashcards writing this stuff on the flashcards, VLAN on one side and on the back of the, the flashcard, what the VLAN stands for, what it does. You need to go get access to um some type of computer. If you got one laying around that you can practice on, or you need to go invest in uh, some virtual labs. And like I say, I sell them on my website. And these virtual labs are created by CompTIA, the people who actually make the exam that you're studying for. It's not something I put together. This is their stuff. Go out there, get you some virtual labs. If you don't have physical equipment lying around, so you you can get your lab on and practice. And the main reason you want to do this is because I want you to actually learn and comprehend the information as opposed to you trying to memorize. Now, I don't know if you're like I say, that last part was really for everybody because maybe this guy is doing all this stuff. I don't know. But like I say, based off all the years I've been doing this, you know, military slash internet, I think a lot of people are just trying to memorize information as opposed to you trying to understand it so that you have, you know, you have some general understanding of how it works, which I personally believe will aid later on in your memorization for you to go take the actual exam instead of you just trying to enter this thing and just trying to memorize crap just to go take a test. So I think if you do those things and you do it 30 minutes to an hour every single day after you go buy your voucher, which you can get a discounted voucher at technologyg.com as well. But you go get your voucher and you schedule that dog on exam 30 minutes to an hour every single day. You do those things I told you to do. There is no way in the world you should fail this test. There's no way. And like I say, I've done this myself because the very first time I took the A plus years ago, I went in there and did everything I'm telling y'all not to do. I tried to memorize a bunch of crap, went in there and failed. And then I had to go in and take the exam again. But the second time I took it, I actually did everything I'm telling y'all to do. Broke up the notepad, the highlighters and you know found some equipment and did what i had to do and guess what i went in there passed with flying colors and i went and took the software part passed with flying colors and every other cert from then Pass with flying colors, right? Because it's the same thing I've been doing all over, uh, you know, every certification I've gotten. So that's what I think my mans here should do. Like I said, I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to say what your name is. You know who you are. But this is what I think you should do. If you really want to be in tech, you really want to get this certification. And at this point, I think you should, you know, just at least give it one more try. One more try ain't going to hurt you. Because here's the thing. Let's just say you're like, man, I got to go cough up another 200. All right, fine. You go cough up another $200, right? So now you don't spend a grand total to get A plus certified, assuming he passed the hardware on the first time go. So he don't took the, the the software three times and the hardware one time, he would have spent about 900 something dollars to get one certification. That's a little outrageous, right? But he mess around and go get his first tech job. He'll make all his money back on his first paycheck. So, you know, it's not like it'll be wasted money. You know what I'm saying? Especially if this is something that he feels he really wants to do. Hopefully I answered that question. Hopefully I gave somebody some motivation out there. Like I say, I'm just telling y'all, I've been doing this. I've been in tech for 20 years. And before IT, I, I was in college. I was a college student for four years. <laughs> so I, I've learned a thing or two since at least 1998 when I, you know, when I actually had to become a legal adult and start doing a grown up things on how, on how to go about this whole education thing. But I just don't want you guys out there trying to memorize bullet points. I want you to comprehend and understand it and then reserve the memorization stuff for you going to exam prep mode, meaning, OK, I got about two weeks before I got to go take this test. I've learned and comprehended everything I got to go. Now I got to memorize this crap so I can pass this dog on exam because you because you don't know what the hell they're going to ask you on the test. And like I say, you mentioned something about PBQs. I don't know. They might. I've known people that went to go take the software or hardware test and they didn't have any PBQs at all on the exam. They had just straight 88, 89, 90 questions, multiple choice questions. So I don't know, like you, you can have two people go take the exam the same day, the same testing center and sit directly next to each other. They're going to get two different versions of the test. One might have three or four, maybe five performance based questions. The other one might have one or they might not have any. I don't know. You just have to be prepared for all of that when you go in there and take the test. All right. So anyways, that's my two cents on that.